We have now located Misha, where Ophir and his brothers lived in Mishad, Iran. Definitively. Let's take a look at where they migrated Safar, a mount of the east. Now, those are two different references. In this video, we will cover Safar. But where does this lead? This will astonish many. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable, and this has already been proven in full in the God Culture Solomon's Gold series over two years ago. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences, from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points, and yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those especially who have not had the time to watch Solomon's Gold series, and easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series nor prove the way that it does, but this will be very effective nonetheless. So, go there for full evidence. But now, part 9 of our series 100 Clues, the Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. We know King Solomon built a navy to go to Ophir for gold and resources. And we know Ophir is a real person for which this land is named. And there is only one which Genesis 10 tells us where he lived at the time of Babel, Misha, Mishad, Iran, and now where he migrated to in the far east. First, Safar. We covered one of Safar's meanings towards a numerous population which leads east from Iran, fully discounting Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia. Already, they're completely out of the discussion from the very start. Yet those are taken as two of the more serious theories out there. We will totally and royally dismantle those as utterly false, as well as India. But this word, Safar, so goes much deeper. Now, some go look these things up in a cross-reference or dictionary, which is good. You do your research. That is a good thing. But don't stop there. Don't stop there because you have to test those guys too, especially when they use tentative language and they're not sure and they're guessing because that's usually what they're doing, especially for ancient geography. I ask the question, based on what? How do they arrive at this conclusion? Is this really truly logical? You see, they don't even prove a position. They just guess most of the time. At least that's what we find on this topic, that's for sure, and others we've covered on this channel. So let's look. What exactly do the Bible dictionaries say? Some of the more popular Easton's and Smith's Bible dictionaries make a massive error showing a lack of actual research. Again, they just don't know, and it's okay that they don't know. And they use, ten use tentative language in most of these, so they do try to cover themselves. You have to admit that, so you don't go and blast them. However, they haven't done their research on this topic. They have a lot to study. The Bible is very large, and there's many, many words to look up. And ancient references are not easy to research. We have found that, there's no doubt. Yet a lot of this is right there on the surface and not that hard to find. We will prove our position thoroughly. Here's the rationale, though, that they use on this one and unfortunately many of their ancient geography. There's a place in Yemen, Saudi Arabia, called Shafar or Zafar. And, well, that sounds like Safar, so voila, that must be it. Really? 
What history do they have to support that? Well, none. And we already proved Jockton and Sons lived in Iran, not Saudi Arabia, and headed east from there. So we're already in a false paradigm with this kind of thinking. Now, here's the real problem, though, with this. They could have vetted this pretty easily. When was Zafar, Yemen, founded? Oops. The second century B.C., so 100 to 200 B.C. Wait, when did Ophir and his brothers migrate to Safar? Ugh, 2200 B.C. So it's completely out of place, 2,000 years too late to fit this narrative at all. But we saw that same level of scholarship with Misha, didn't we? And we see it all over this narrative. It's as if they aren't even trying to get this right. And maybe that's the case, but likely not. They just haven't researched it. Well, not only that Shafar in Hebrew is actually a ram's horn, which is a different word from Safar. Uh, so, well, they're not the same word, are they? Ophir and his father, Joktan, or Yachtan, never lived near Saudi Arabia at any time. Let's look at another. The International Standard Bible Dictionary, one that we respect, and many times they do get things right, but not on this. They use the same flawed logic. They play the name game. They first use the similarity of their names, in sound of course, as the same basis, even dismissing the fact that they are not actually the same word, which they actually recognize, they do, but then ignore, because they say, the appropriateness of the site seems to outweigh the discrepancy. Well, yeah, it's a different word. That's a big discrepancy. Good job. They then cite the word kafar, somehow mixed into this reference, which has no place whatsoever. It is not the same name of the two towns, which are zafar, with a Z, by the way, not an S. And then they're saying that it's, well, it's similar to safar, in definition. But who cares? It's impertinent. The name of these two towns is not Kafar. They are Zafar, which is not the same word, nor is either the same word as Safar, but wouldn't matter even if the definition were the same, which Kafar is similar to Safar, but that's not the name of these two towns. So why would you use it? Well, no one logical would. The towns are both Zafar, not Safar, not Kafar. Then they say it's not the first Sabaean kingdom, Zafar, which history dates around 1200 BC in its founding. Oops. Ophir migrated to Safar in 2200 BC. So this is meaningless again, off a thousand years too late. However, they do admit they don't know, as they use tentative language throughout the whole article. And then they end with, the latter is probably to be accepted as the biblical site. See, again, it's okay. They're using tentative language. But don't go to that tentative language and try to debate with us because it's not going to work. We don't use tentative language. We go for it and we prove. Yeah, well, probably doesn't really cut it, does it? Especially Jotun and his sons who never lived in Saudi Arabia, neither before nor after their migration, either one. So what is this word, Safar? Let's look at a definition that will really nail this down and match the next reference even.
the Mount of the East coming in the next clue. Safar has multiple meanings. We mentioned towards a numerous population already, so it's not here on the screen. But here's more. Counting, kind of, towards a numerous population. A spin-off of that, a variant. Recounting a story, text, or writing. Brilliance, luminary. Boundary, scribe. And the tree of life? Uh, where did that come from? And where exactly is the tree of life? Well, the Bible says in Genesis that it is in the midst of the Garden of Eden. Hmm. Now, here's the thing. What do all of these definitions have in common? They all lead to the same place in the east where the Garden of Eden was planted. As with most extremely ancient words, they take on all of their defined meanings. We covered counting toward a numerous population means it would be in the direction of the east from Iran. This is recounting one of the oldest stories from the Garden of Eden and one of the most famous as well. Where there are luminary angels and precious stones, either way, on Shem's eastern border boundary, which we will cover much more in detail with maps even very soon. But it leads to the far east specifically, where the great scribe, the first in all of history, is recorded to live. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, was taken one day and was not, for God took him in the book of Jubilee, says he was conducted into the Garden of Eden. Now we'll get to that reference. We'll show you. Don't worry. In this one definition, you have complete directions to the Garden of Eden in the far east on Shem's eastern border, in fact. And the next reference will be equally revealing, if not more. Ophir was returning to the land of the Garden of Eden, and we'll prove that way further. The land of Adam and Eve, where the first record of gold, biblically, exists. Coming soon, we'll get to that in more detail. The word safar is a huge key here, and there is so much that this opens. You know, early in Solomon's Gold series, when we had proven that the Philippines was Ophir, we were already seeing some references that kept leading to the Garden of Eden, but we just pushed them to the side and we didn't go there. Many Filipinos told us that that's not all this is, that the Philippines is the Garden of Eden. That's found there. Now, honestly, we backed off from that. We rejected that at first, thinking even if it were true, we may never be able to actually prove it, and we like to prove things here. But wait till all this comes together. We actually find even exact directions to the Garden of Eden, but it's too early to go there. Next, the Mount of the East. What is it? Is the Bible being brilliant here? And telling us exactly where Ophir is? Oh, it nails it down pretty good. But you'll have to watch more clues to get there and pull them together. As we keep saying, there is no debating. The Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. After just nine short videos, there really is no doubting that the Philippines is this ancient land. And no one else qualifies, nor does anyone have the history, and we have hardly even covered anything yet. We're just getting started, not even 10% of the way through. It is time this knowledge be restored for those about to comment in ignorance. Yep, we always get them. We dare you 
to watch Solomon's Gold series by the God Culture, the original channel to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir. And hey, go ahead as a skeptic. Try to prove it wrong. We dare you. Because no one has been able to do that. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together in history, the Bible, science, geography, language, etc. And this series will blow your mind. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, don't forget to click the bell, and like us on our new Facebook, The God Culture Hyphen Original. If you wish to skip ahead, go to the God Culture YouTube channel and watch their Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines, and no one can dispute it. Until next time...